I told you guys yesterday as we finished the Tuesday edition of the program that he had walked into studio here in D.C., and so we are taping this on Tuesday, but we're playing it for you now on Wednesday. Congressman Jim Jordan, who the heck knows what might happen in the next 24 hours, (laughs) let's be honest. But I want to start here with you. American politics. No kidding. Even for crazy American politics standards, (laughs) thanks for being here. Uh, I want to start with our good friend, I call her Fanny because I think she's shown her ass a lot. Uh, Fanny Willis down in Atlanta yeah. uh, was on Rachel Maddow's show, I believe. Uh, yeah. And she decided that she wanted to weigh in on you. We've got the audio. Here is cut six. Mm-hmm. Jim Jordan has time after time after time attacked my office um, with no legitimate purpose. Anyone who knows Jim Jordan's history knows that um, – He only has the purpose of trying to interfere in a criminal investigation. He has now turned his tricks to he's going to look at grant programs, which I invite him to do. And we have complied with his subpoenas. But yet he continues his attacks to try to interfere in a criminal investigation while all while his jurisdiction has one of the worst crime rates has poverty issues, um, and not one time has he used his position to try to investigate people who are attacking me and attacking others legitimately doing their jobs, making him illegitimate in his position, um, and it's disgusting. And so I bring that up at the federal level because now at the state level, they've decided to follow this clown's lead. Okay, she called you a clown. Yeah. I would think, uh, just to refresh for everybody out there, she hired her lover. Yep. She paid him $700,000 in state funds. Uh, she may well get removed by the Georgia Court of Appeals before all is said and done. When she decides to go after you in that manner, is it a badge of honor? What do you think when things like that, when attacks like that are made against you? I mean, their, their case is falling apart. I mean, she paid uh, Nathan Wade, as you said, $700,000. He came to D.C., met with met with the Justice Department, met with the January 6th committee, met with folks at the White House, all part of this coordinated effort to go to President Trump. And, oh, by the way, there's a whistleblower down there who's talked to us. Uh, Ms. Timpson, who's come forward and said she did – it. Uh, she alleges she misspent federal funds. So – you know, like I said, I've been called a lot worse than clown um, by by folks. So I just try to stick to the facts. In fact, Clay, every one of these cases is falling apart. The immunity thing in, in D.C. is on hold. Uh, two weeks ago, Jack Smith got caught altering the sequence of the documents he seized. The physical documents don't match up with the scan documents. Some people might call that tampering with the evidence, something you're not allowed to do. And, of course, the irony is not lost on anyone. Jack Smith mishandled documents while he's charging President Trump with mishandling documents. So that case is falling apart. And, of course, we know what's going on in New York, which is a complete, complete joke. Uh, we saw that when, uh, when, when Michael – Alvin Bragg said – uh, he could not – and this is like two two years ago – could not envision a uh, bringing a prosecution against President Trump and calling Michael Cohen as a prosecution witness. That's what he said, and but then in fact did just that after Trump announces he's running for president. So um, these cases are all about politics, and when you're all about politics, you can see why there's a good chance they all fall apart like they are. Congressman Jordan, appreciate you being with us here. You bet, look. What, what do you think – happens if i mean clay and i talked about this a bit yesterday on the show uh let's say uh, and i unfortunately predicted that there'll be a conviction in new york not because i disagree in any way that it's a sham i think it's an outrageous sham uh it's an absurdity but not a funny one really when you think about what's at stake um but i think the jury's biased maybe i'm wrong we'll see Mm -hmm. if there is a hung jury which i think clay is more inclined to think that's a possibility what does it mean for the rest of these cases i mean do, do they just then act like Nothing really, no big deal. J6, we're going to get them on that, or maybe we'll get them in Florida or something else. Is, is that just where this goes? Because it feels like it's all such clear election interference at this yeah. point, and they're going to double down on it no matter what. Is that is that your read? Yeah, I think so, because, again, you know, you go through the history. We've talked about this before, but, you know, they spot his campaign in 16, then it's Mueller. Then it's then it's uh, you know Mueller what nineteen lawyers thirty million dollars forty one agents they go into that they find nothing then it's impeachment then they raid his home then it's you know all four of these cases then it's the Fourteenth Amendment everything they try doesn't seem to work um, but they're not going to stop trying because they're determined to keep President Trump from being the next president of the United States so yeah I think they just 
just keep plowing ahead. Now, as I said before, the good news is all these all these cases are falling apart because they never should have been brought in the first place. But I do not see Democrats letting up. One thing about Democrats, particularly the left, which now controls their party, they are committed to to getting to the objective come heck or high water. That's just that's just how they operate, unfortunately. Do you sense that there's starting to be a little bit of a panic inside of the Biden campaign? The decision to debate on June 27th and yeah. September 10th, uh, the lawfare collapsing regardless yeah. of what happens in New York City. We're five and a half months out. You've known Trump for a long time. I'm not sure he's ever been at a stronger political position mm -hmm. in his career than he is as we're talking today. Do you get the sense that they're starting? They spent tens of millions of dollars already. Their game plan, as it were, kind of getting its ass kicked. Yeah. Uh, do you sense that they're starting to panic a little bit? Yeah, particularly when the polling in the states that count, the seven states that now determine the presidency of the United States, uh, what are they, there, there was I saw one poll, Georgia, they were down like 12 points. Yeah. In Arizona, they were down like 10 points. And, you know, the only state I think of this of the seven – where they're like dead even is Wisconsin, which Wisconsin's always dead even. You know, yeah. it's just the way Wisconsin is right now. Um, but they're winning the other six, including Nevada up substantially in the yes. polls I saw like a week and a half ago, I think. So I do think that's, you know, because we're not, we're used to the polls being kind of close and the polls being a little off. And some of our voters like get nervous about even saying anything. You know, I, I just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to weigh in. Uh, and yet now with them showing Trump in the lead and by substantial margins in, in some of these key states, I do think, you know, why else would they out of the blue just, well, Shazam, we're going to we, we need to debate in June. Well, whoever heard of that? Yeah. You know, it's like, of course, we're going to have debates. We have them every four years in a presidential race, but we never had them in June. And they came from Biden, who we thought was not going to debate. So um, I think that does indicate, you know, your, your question is, is on target. Speaking of Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio, uh, Congressman, obviously, some very important races, including uh, Bernie Marino, mm. who is running Good for candidate. a critical Senate seat. Uh, as you're seeing it in, 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 on the House side and the Senate side, uh, what are the what are the the, the issues that are going to be the determining factors in the important close races? Right. I mean, it, where it yeah. really counts, where we need to win in order to have control of the House and control of the Senate. Uh, what would you say are the top three issues? Yeah, secure border to no border. That's the biggest change in three years and 120 days, ever long Joe Biden's been president. Uh, safe streets to record crime. And um, you can you can measure the inflation both in the, in the cost of gas and everything else. So it's, you know, from $2 gas to $4 gas, from stable prices to record record inflation. Those are the issues that are going to drive. You take your family out to dinner. Yep. We, our, our youngest son and, and daughter-in-law and their little one over in Indianapolis, and we took them out to dinner. That was like a month or so ago. And we didn't go to the fancy. We, but it was a nice restaurant, and you get the bill for just like the five of us, four of us. Yeah. That's a dairy. Like, holy cow! How do middle class families like? It's crazy. Well, just to go to a pretty nice restaurant with your family. So I think all those things, and then you add in this attack on Trump, this weaponization of government, these agencies being turned against we the people, and then the final straw is some people are going to step back and look. You know, with President Trump. We didn't have Russia going into Ukraine. We didn't have Hamas, a terrorist organization, attacking our best friend, the state of Israel. None of that garbage was going on. And I kind of liked it when it wasn't going on, people are going to say. So I think those kind of – those three key issues, the weaponization of government and then this foreign policy to some – is in the back of people's minds as well. And they're going to say like, let's go back to Trump. Things were so much better. You listen to the show, so you're aware that Buck and I have been on opposite sides of whether Biden's going to be the guy. Yeah. And I know you have seen it been feels like size of a number. Uh, uh, yeah, the ice cream debate and the, who's going to be the Democrat. That's nominee, right. All those are important. So it's important answer here for you to see whether you're on the side of truth, justice <laughs> and clay or evil and uh, and and and, and yeah. awful things and buck. But to set that up, it feels like every day now. There is a new viral Biden clip yeah. where he's just not able to read the teleprompter or he's not able to get off the stage. June 27th, you mentioned, is now the CNN debate. Do you think they're really going to roll with this guy? Or do you think as the lawfare is crumbling and as Biden's essential argument for why he deserves the second term, it feels like every day takes a new punch to the mm -hmm. gut. What are they thinking? 
I don't know, but I, I do. T- I, I hate to say, since I'm sitting with you and watching Buck on the screen here, I, I, I'm with. I'm with oh Buck no, let's this. cut I'm the with, interview yeah. now. I'm cut the Buck interview. Oh, I can't he, hear you. He, he, he doesn't want to wait a second, Congressman. You don't want to join Clay on his rapidly sinking ship. What a shock! <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I think this far, and and I mean, if they change now, like what's the country say? Like uh, what? Well, now we got to. We were we were kind of sizing them up. You know, because I mean, it's always about the choice. We're sizing them up, and now it's like somebody completely new, and we got five months to figure this out. I mean, maybe, but my gut tells me. And and look, I I wasn't necessarily there a few months ago. I thought, you know, when, when, will they will they bump him out for someone else and put put someone else in there? But now I think it's going to be I think it's going to be Biden. I just think it is. It's it's Grant and Joe. They'll still try to play that game, and they'll still, aside from these two baits, probably keep him keep him away from the crowds as much as possible. Um, that's my gut. And I don't I don't know if they have anything else. But the scary thing is, is what are they planning for September and October? What do you think? That's I don't know. That's but the I, big... keep coming, I keep coming back to like, you know, there's something else, because if they don't get a conviction and these like they don't get a conviction in New York, these other three cases are falling apart. What are they going to do? And I keep kind of racking my brain like what? What is it? I'm I'm with you, Jim. See, see, I see this as, uh, first of all, you know, you're right because you're agreeing with me and and I've been right all along, which is that (laughs) Biden's going to be the nominee and everyone says, oh, no, it's going to be some other person. I'm like, no, it's going to be Biden. And and sure enough, it will be. Um, But I I also agree with you that they're not just going to go off to the election as things stand now. I mean, because I think even if they got a conviction in New York, I I think the numbers might go even deeper uh, in the positive column for Trump. I mean, I, I think it could blow up even more in their face. So they're going to pull something else, and I, I I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. But you know, I'm certainly not not celebrating early. Um, just before we let you go, Congressman, because we're run up against the clock. Uh, I you know, do, do you have much of a sense of uh, does the VP really matter, and and do you have a VP that you think is the right choice for uh, for the Trump ticket? I, I like all the people he's talked to. I mean, I, I really like Sarah Huckabee. Saying I don't know if she's on the kind of the, the list, but I like Elise. She's a colleague of ours. She's she's been tremendous. Tim Scott, Mark. Can, can I ask you a question? I, yeah. Actually, I want to jump in really quick. Is, yeah. Elise, is Elise a conservative? Is, is Elise a conservative? She's been, it's, she's it's been solid. She's been really solid. I, I mean, we worked well together back in 2019 on defending President Trump during impeachment when they did the crazy impeachment thing and, and uh, on the Intel Committee. And because uh, then, then Leader McCarthy put me on the Intel Committee for two months during during the impeachment process. So, uh, yeah, she's been she's been tremendous. So but I think this is all about President Trump. I really do. Mm. Uh, I think our team is coming. You saw that a hundred thousand people, Wildwood, New Jersey. Like our folks are fired up, and and I think it's all about him, uh, and that comparison between him and Joe Biden. And what a what a contrast! Holy cow, what a contrast! So I think Congressman that's Jim thing. Jordan, always appreciated. I'm, I'm you get to hang out with Clay in D.C. <laughs> I'll I'll be there next time. I, I actually right, don't take any excuse to hang out in the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> going on like a swamp tour. I really enjoy you guys' show. You do a great job. Appreciate thank that. Thank you Good so much. You. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Clay. Yeah, I, I do love it. Sometimes when we talk to Jim, he can reference other shows we've done where he wasn't a guest. That's always what. It, if you want to ingratiate yourself to radio hosts, it's reference the show when you weren't a guest because you were actually listening. <laughs> then we're like, oh, it's true. That's <laughs> it's totally true. By the way, it's just, you know it's fantastic. Thanks, anyway, um, look, we we're uh, talking about DC. Government service. There are very good people doing very good government service in D.C. And in fact, there are a lot of ways to serve. Federal government employees are in the hundreds of thousands, and any of them can join this website, GovX. It's for government employees, federal, state, county, and city level. GovX has got great discounts on products, vacations, concert tickets, and so much more. If you're former or current military, a teacher, firefighter, law enforcement officer, this site is for you. GovX is also open to all government service personnel, so I qualified CIA. Believe it or not, it's government service. It's what they tell me. Join today. It's easy, fast, and free. GovX.com. That's G-O-V-X.com. You'll unlock unbeatable discounts. Oh, you're like, okay, Buck, like what? Uh, things that I want from GovX? Benchmade knives, 511 tactical gear. Carrie and I just got our Ray-Ban sunglasses. I was wearing them yesterday. They look fantastic. 40% off, up to 40% off, you can save. On apparel, boots, shoes, jewelry, watches, optics, camping and hunting gear. GovX also gives back. They donate a portion of every single order to nonprofits that serve military and first responder communities. Go to GovX.com today. Join a community of more than 8.5 million people who are already saving. See if you qualify. GovX.com. Use the code BUCK in your shopping cart to get $15 off your first order. Gov, G-O-V-X, promo code BUCK.